So I just got back from Justice League and uh, I don't I don't I really have no more words for any of you guys who will be like oh, you're just a Marvel fan but aren't you because uh, I told you guys at Thor, I was just like, I think I've hit burnout point with these superhero movies, you know. And Thor even more so of the storyline because there was no storyline and, you know, it was just based around comedy and that is Marvel style. And yes, while there, were, there was comedy in Justice League and I appreciate, you know, Zack Snyder actually trying to attempt at some good humor at times it just comes off as annoying and a bit ridiculous uh, so take this review with a grain of salt I'm really really done with the superhero movie and for those of you guys who are like well you're just a Star Wars fanboy man you you geek out every time and Star Wars comes around and I'm just saying while that may be true, I'm also still a critic and I have to go, yes, I do see a lot of uh, similarities between uh, New Hope and, um, you know, Empire Strikes Back with the, the Episode 7. And that's my first initial reaction to it. I was just like, yep, it's a, you know, it's a rethread. But you know what? I haven't seen Star Wars in a long, long time, so I'll give it a pass. But... <coughs> With this new one coming around, it does seem to be going along those lines of you know, Return of the Jedi and also a bit of Empire still. And I'm a bit wary for that and I'm cautiously optimistic about it, just like I was about Wonder Woman. And you guys know my opinion about Wonder Woman. I made it clear that, okay, this might not be a movie for me. But I can definitely see why people like it, why people think it's empowering. Because at points I was like, yeah, okay, you know, Diana is pretty badass here, so there you go. And the one thing I remember bringing up was her slow motion uh, action sequences that were overdone. And in here, it doesn't get better. It just gets a little bit worse. And uh, the CG is a bit worse as well. The tone of this movie is really, really horrible. Uh, by the third uh, third act, I couldn't even, like, open my eyes anymore because of the freaking color scheme, man. And I know you guys are like, well, you know, you have to give Zack Snyder some some leeway here. You know, he's been through a lot. You know, he's been through depression. You know, he's certainly had something going on because I could definitely see it in his work. Because, you know, in, in some of the sequences, I was like, well, he's definitely going through some things. And... I could definitely see that with the bringing back of Superman. SPOILERS! Really? If you don't know Superman is coming back, it's fucking clear that he's coming back because he can't be- he can't be killed and he's that OP fucking character that you choose because you don't- you feel fucking lazy to play- play the fucking fighting game and you're just like, you know what, this is the most OP character that I can use so I'm gonna use him and there you go this is the point of Superman across the comics and he is literally a duus ex machina in this movie so you bash me all you want but there you go I don't I don't even know what else to say to you because he's literally a duus ex machina and I was I was just saying that in my you know trailer reactions as well I was just like you know he's gonna be a duet of Smokina. It it can't be anything else. But I thought at least it was gonna be later on in the movie. But it just was the beginning of the third act. So I was like, well, Superman's alive. I don't need to watch it because I know what's gonna happen next. So you know, I was just checked out after that. So there, there you go. Um, but yes, I will give the movie props for 
Cyborg, I thought it was pretty well done. I was just like, well, you know, some of the trailers it didn't look good, but for the most part, I think I took it well. I was just like, okay, you know what? There's so much shitty CG. Uh, I'll fucking take it. I'll fucking take what I can get. I, I do actually appreciate the Barry suit. I think it's really cool that they kind of they kind of explain the science of it. But my friend didn't bring up a good point as well. You know, sometimes Barry is a bit. You know, slow, not as, you know, I mean, he's the fastest man alive, but at some points, you know, he doesn't take social cues well, and he says that as well, so I think, you know, that plays well into that, so I, I definitely appreciate that they, they did that. Um, I just did not like Diana in this one, because, you know, she, okay, she is... She is good, don't get me wrong, the actress is good, she's doing a good job. I'm just saying, the character herself, I felt she was a bit preachy in this one, so I was like, okay, like, it doesn't go overboard, you know, when something goes overboard with this, but I, it really gets under my skin when somebody is really, really preachy, so I was like, frick that, because, like, who the, who the heck are you to, like, be all goody goody two shoes because like humanity is not perfect and of course she is goddess so she is perfect but i'm just saying i don't really enjoy that but if you do go ahead i'm not here to i'm not here to bash your your, your guys's opinion i'm just i'm just saying my opinion and for me the moment you know it's kind of a boring movie for me is if i check my watch or I yawn a lot of times, and I counted the number of times I yawned in this movie. It was four times, and I checked my watch only once, which was kind of good. Which I was like, because I was just like, wait, how 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 many hours is this? Wait, it's one hour forty five minutes, and it was only the second act. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, <laughs> because this movie felt like three hours and that's the problem with the dceu is that it just feels very bloated and don't get me wrong a lot of people can do mixed storylines very well they can integrate it very smoothly you don't really see the lines you don't really see the okay we we wanna we wanna pad the running time out we wanna push this character to say something that he would normally say or you know just create a reactionary series out of all of them i would say the guardians of the galaxy is a quite a good example the second one at least um and also bit at the first one i'm not saying that guardians of the galaxy is bad but okay if you want to take a you know, if you want to take a dc movie take a look at dark knight you know it it was very long, but it didn't feel bloated because they knew how to keep the shots down, how to keep the dialogue down, and, you know, yes, of course, there was a bit of explanatory, you know, exposition and whatever not, but I'm just saying, you know, that felt like a really flowing narrative from one place you go to the other and then the next. But this one, it, it feels very jumbled, and I think this is one of the problems of Zack Snyder, is that as much as he wants to bash critics or you know internet bloggers or people like me who kind of just watch it and uh, and don't think twice about it but it has become my job to think twice about it um it's more of those lines where i was like i have to respect Zack snyder for his cinematography okay like his cinematography is really good some of the shots are really well done and I really enjoy that. But, man, his action sequences are way too much into the fast zooms and the, you know, slowdowns. And I'm just like, bro, I can only take so much of that. Like, at some point, it gets grating on me as a viewer, as an audience. And I'm just like, if I were to just like fast forward something and like slow it down and fast forward it again, I don't think... I don't think it's it's a very good material that I'm putting out because it's just fast forwarding and slowing it down and fast forwarding it in. It's I don't want to even say it's bad because I went into this, you know, feeling very, very indifferent about it. And, you know, Wonder Woman, I was pretty cautiously optimistic about it because I had heard good things about Wonder Woman. 
And after watching Wonder Woman, I was like, I don't know what the big fuss is about because I ended up being more indifferent about Wonder Woman than uh, Justice League. Um, you know, Justice League is edging more towards hate than indifference, really. Uh, and I was like, Wonder Woman was edging towards good, but I'm more towards the indifferent. Um, this one I'm a bit towards the hate because of the runtime and because of the bloatedness that I could feel. Like, this is so fucking bloated. I, I couldn't. Uh, I, I can't be asked to, to do that. Um, but one of the good things as well, I will say, you know, I keep going back and forth, I know that, but I, I kind of like, uh, Superman's, uh, suit in this one. I don't know what they did to make it, like, brighter, you know, more well integrated, but I was just like, okay, that, that is a really better done suit than the Man of, of Steel one, but then again, I don't really remember Man of Steel, and okay, given the choice between Wonder Woman and Justice League, I would say definitely say Wonder Woman uh, is comparably better than uh, Justice League. And I wished Aquaman had more screen time, obviously, but my friend did bring did bring a, a good point up, and he's like, well, you know, he's Aquaman, and you know, there's not gonna be much water around, so. He's practically useless. He's just there because the second box was from the Atlanteans. So there you have it. Uh, Steppenwolf was a pretty good villain up until, you know, Superman came back, as predicted. Um, and my friend asked me, like, okay, what happened to the Green Lanterns? And I was just like, well, you know, we saw that fight that, you know, kind of wiped them out but we also saw one ring fall and float away so that is a hit of a future lantern perhaps maybe and of course it's gonna be Hal Jordan I don't know who's gonna be, be the actor playing the Green Lantern because Green Lantern did bad at the box office so you know Warner Brothers is kind of waiting it out um, but I can say this, this will be the last DC movie I ever watch, I think, I'm not, I'm not even gonna watch the next one, I think, I think this one just killed it for me, I'm just like, hmm, I, I saw some other people's review about it, and they were like, well, this is amazing, man, I just wanna want it, uh, and some people were like, well, you know, it has the fucking rewatchability, uh, uh, factor, and I was like, it's family friendly. I don't know if it's being sarcastic because you know there was a few f bombs in here that my country kind of censored out, uh, which was asshole and uh, son of a bitch. Um, you know those type of deals. Hey man, I'm a cursor. I know what you're cursing. Okay, you censoring it, it not gonna help because I know. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, but uh. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I think I definitely think the the DCU can do linear storylines really, really well. Um, and I also think that you know Zack Snyder learning from his mistakes is a very good thing because uh, you know I don't think he took Batman v Superman really seriously as well. So there was a part of this movie where I was just like, okay, that that was. That was a good callback when um, Superman holds up Batman and is like, "Do you bleed?" And I was just like, oh, "Okay, that that was good." Uh, but I have to say, the most cringiest thing I've ever seen this year is Henry Cavill's chest hair. And you know, I was just talking about my friend about like dyslexic words coming uh, coming out of his mouth and I and I I was pretty ironic about it like I mean like I didn't mean it as well like it's just like uh, a mix up of your brain and it's just like your your brain kind of switches the words around so it's like, it's like uh, hair chest and I was like wait what um but yeah his chest hair man freaking cringe um but yeah other than that I kind of knew the movie was over when Superman came back. I'm just like, yep, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty checked out at this moment. And him coming back, 
that that's that means time to go to sleep. Like I don't I don't even need to know the rest of it. And of course I I had to sit there and watch it because I paid ten ringgit, which is about well if I'm gonna divide it into like the U.S. money, I'm gonna divide it by five, so it's about two bucks of U.S. money. <laughs> Her money is fucking small, so two bucks for a ticket. I think that's like really affordable for you guys, but for us, it's like buying a premium ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, a, a ticket, a usual ticket would be like twelve bucks a pop, which is uh, which is always pricey for us. So we have like student discounts and everything. So yeah, there. Um, and that's why we got the special price today, which is the student price. Um, but yeah, man, Steppenwolf was really, really good. I thought... <sighs> if I were to make this movie a little bit better, I would have focused more on Diana trying to prove to Steppenwolf that she can defeat him on her own. But again... Superman, the most OP character of DC, and I'm just like, well, there you go, you know. And of course, they they kind of you know, not really steal, but I mean, just like reiterate the like Flash versus Superman slash Supergirl, uh, that has been done a lot of times. I remember the old old Flash as well did that as well, so. Uh, yeah, this is just something which is fun, I guess, for the comic readers to go and be like, Oh, I remember that from the comics. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I read comics, okay? I read a few comics, and I'm just like, one of my friends, like, I saw on his Facebook, he was just like, Well, this is true to the comic books, and I was like, really? Like... I know comic books are over exaggerated and everything, but to adapt something to film, you can't keep that color scheme. Okay, I know in comic books that was the color scheme, but in film it just looks fucking ugh, disgusting. And I know that's, that's what's supposed to be the feeling, but you can't carry it through the movie because. The, the viewer was just like checked out and but you know why I don't want to look at the screen because it's too red it's too blood red it's too freaking dark because I don't know what's what's up with Zack Snyder and filming shit in the dark oh my god this I would say that it didn't leave an impact Right now, it's more of me being exasperated that we could get a much, much better movie than this, but it decided to fall into tropes, you know. Batman saying, well, Alfred, bring out the big guns, and it appears to be Lewis Lane, who, by the way, has no freaking function in this movie at all, so there you go. Another easy paycheck for Amy Adams. Her name was big and bold, but on the on the writing part, it was like two uh two people, one guy's name and Zack Snyder. Like I couldn't even see the R because it was like at the side. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna call you Snyder for the rest of my life because that's that's what most of this movie. And I think his whole production company. Really, really makes sense now because it's cruel and unusual. <laughs> and that's freaking ironic because that's the production company that you chose to name. So there you have it. You'll have cruel and unusual films forever. Ah, oh, man. I'm just... I haven't read any reviews. Okay, guys. I'm not being paid by Marvel. I'm just a lowly student who watches movies and I'm just like, I'm so sick of DC not being able to bring it back to the Nolan years. Like, what happened? Like, I thought they had the formula down. You know, give us 
a story that we can relate to, that we wanna be there to be like, yeah, guys, go ahead, beat that Steppenwolf guy, you know, or be sympathetic to the villain, which happened in Spider-Man Homecoming, which I didn't expect, you know, I was like, well, you know, it's gonna be another villain, but then at the end, I was like, oh, okay, you made me feel for the villain, you know, or, you know, make him freaking OP and can't beat, and then you'd be like, oh man, shit, they've lost everything, our heroes have lost everything, how are they gonna come back from this? More Justice League members. Right? Right? I'm just exasperated. Like, if you, if you want me to go really angry, you'll have to give me a really pretentious message like Okja. But this one didn't even get under my skin. I was just like, well, I'm going into this. Really indifferent. I decided to buy the merchandise. I bought the fridge magnet. I bought the popcorn, and I was like, "Okay, let me uh, let me turn off my brain." But I couldn't, and that's the saddest thing for a movie to do because I'm just like, I want to be entertained. I wanna, I wanna support these characters. I wanna, I wanna be there with Aquaman. I wanna be there with Wonder Woman. I wanna be there with the Flash. I wanna be there with Batman. Not necessarily Superman because he's OP, but still. <laughs> but it doesn't even do that. It t has a few funny lines, and then it was like going for class, which. Skip for this movie, and I'm like, I don't want to be in class, but seems like I can't escape class because this is just as boring as my class, so I might as well have gone for class and had the same amount of joy. I don't. I don't. I don't know what you want me to say, guys. Like at one point, my. My friend was like, well, you know, I think Batman should have said Martha. And I was just like, you know what? I would have accepted that by this point. I, I needed more laughs, you know what I'm saying? If they can if they can make fun of themselves for Batman v Superman, we should be able to make fun of Batman v Superman, you know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, you know, I don't even know how I cut 23 minutes out of this. Uh, this movie is really really forgettable for me i was spending so much time thinking about this movie and barely could get like five words out and i so i decided to change up my style today and just say you know what how do i fix this movie because it seems that dc doesn't understand how to dc anymore and that's sad and you know all props to zack snyder for coming back and you know doing justice league and you know, being the director, I could see some Ben Affleck stuff in there, and I was like, okay, that was pretty good, Ben Affleck, but of, obviously, the ending parts is definitely Zack Snyder, which I was just like, oh, no, Zack, Snyder, oh, man, bro, I know you're going through some stuff, but you don't need to shove it down in your audience's throat, okay? You want to make Superman OP? Go ahead, man. Just, just choose a tone that doesn't kill my eyeballs. And I just always imagine the SpongeBob meme where you know King Neptune takes off his crown and Fred is just like, bald, 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 my eyes. You know, burning through his eyeballs. His eyes are like drying up and. Dying from the sight of the baldness, and this one I'm dying from the sight of the blood reds. <laughs> what do I give this movie? I I'm so tempted to give it nearer to Super Batman v Superman, which is four out of ten. But again, I 
I kind of enjoyed some parts of it more than I did Batman v Superman and I watched Batman v Superman twice so just to see what the fuss was about I guess for Batman v Superman but I don't think I'm gonna watch Justice League twice that's for sure um and I only oh, yeah, I'm gonna find more problems with the movie oh god um I can't put it up there with Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman did really well for me at least compared to this movie um I think overall I'm gonna have to give it a six just because of Jason Momoa I think he did a really good job Ezra Miller bless his soul man he was trying but I don't I think you know he got really grating at some point and I never thought I'd say this but I I miss Jesse Eisenberg man and he appeared in the after credit scene and I'm like okay you know that was really cool um I'm pretty excited to see Slade Wilson um and of course the first after credit scene was again the one of uh, Barry Allen uh, uh, you know challenging Superman to race um, but yeah other than that yeah I'm gonna give this a six wait no th did I give Batman C V Superman a six as well <sighs> no 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 I give it a four so I'm gonna give this a six yeah sure why not six out of ten wouldn't watch this again maybe if I catch it on cable, maybe if there's an online version, but if not, then I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna watch another DC movie again. I don't, I doubt I'm gonna watch the next. Uh, Avengers Marvel movie. I think I'm pretty done with superhero. I think Justice League proved me to be really, really impatient with these type of of stuff already. Because you know their series has done better, and I heard a bit of the the Flash theme song from the the TV show. So there you go. Um, and uh, also you know. The Batman theme song. I was just like, oh, okay. That was pretty cool. Uh, Superman theme song, obviously. Um, no Wonder Woman theme song, which I was like, hmm. But yeah, guys, that was about it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm just, I'm just tired, man. <laughs> so if you like, like this, please leave a like, but. Uh, most likely you guys won't like it because you guys are just I don't know a lot of you know, internet people are, are I guess in my same boat as well like a lot of it is just like stop being so you know DC fanboy and open your eyes and kind of just like take it with a grain of salt at least um, okay, so just share my videos and um, you know, you can hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more from me and remember to ring the bell because YouTube loves to unsubscribe people and also you'll get first time news from me, so there you have it. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will most likely be Star Wars and Force of Evil, which I'm really looking forward to because I had a bad time with uh, Justice League, or rather, I had a really depressing time with Justice League. So thank you guys so much for watching and again. I will see you guys in the next video.